All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. And the last thing I want to take a look at with you really is just sort of summarizing the information we've taken a look at here together about quadrilaterals, right? Um, over the last several sections, we've been talking about four-sided figures, quadrilaterals. In particular, we talked about some parallelograms, which are rectangles, rhombuses, and squares, and the properties that go with those three figures, rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. Then we talked about two other shapes, which both are quadrilaterals, one which is a kite that is not a parallelogram whatsoever, it really has nothing in common with parallel parallelograms at all, it's just simply a quadrilateral. And then the other one, the one we just took a look at was a trapezoid, um, which is absolutely a quadrilateral, um, but is um, not quite a parallelogram because it only has one pair of parallel sides. Anyway. Really, the whole point of this diagram right here is just to sort of help us rehash out and go through the shapes that we've looked at so far. So, of course, starting out, this entire uh, chapter, these last few sections have been all about quadrilaterals. all about quadrilaterals, right? So this box is my universe. Everything inside my universe is a four-sided figure, right? That's what quadrilateral means, four-sided figures. All right, now what we did is we then began to sort of break things down into special kinds of quadrilaterals. And we come to quadrilaterals where two pairs of parallel sides. Well, guys, that's our definition of a parallelogram. So what we see here is there are lots of quadrilaterals. In our universe of quadrilaterals, there are many four-sided figures. But right here inside this oval, right, right here inside this oval, we have a few special kinds of quadrilaterals we call parallelograms. We talked about three of them. Three special kinds of parallelograms, and what are they? Well, there was one where all four angles were right angles. Of course, that was a rectangle. So, we had a rectangle which has four right angles. Then we talked about another really important parallelogram. That parallelogram was one where the four congruent sides. Well, the parallelogram that had four sides and those sides were all congruent was a rhombus. Then, we talked about this really interesting figure where we take the properties of rectangles, the properties of rectangles, and we combine the properties of rectangles with the properties of rhombuses. And where those properties overlap gives us a really interesting shape that we call a square. So the point here is simply this. We have our universe and our universe is four-sided figures that we call quadrilaterals. Within that universe, there are some special quadrilaterals we call parallelograms. We looked at three of those parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses, and then the intersection of those two shapes, rectangles and rhombuses, you put them together and you get a square. Then, just more recently here, what we did is we talked about a couple more figures. First, we talked about a figure that absolutely is a quadrilateral but is not in any way at all a parallelogram, and that was our kite. Right? There are several very interesting properties dealing with kites, and we solved a number of example problems based on those properties, but this is not a parallelogram. It just simply falls in with the rest of these shapes because it is a four-sided figure. It's a quadrilateral, but that's all that the rectangle, rhombus, square, and kite have in common. The only thing they have in common is that they're all four-sided figures. That's it. Then, the last one. We just talked about trapezoids. Now, 
Now, of course, trapezoids are quadrilaterals, but the reason the trapezoid doesn't fall inside the circle for my parallelograms is because it's, it's close, but it's not quite a parallelogram. Remember, the trapezoid only has one pair of parallel sides, whereas a parallelogram must have two pairs of parallel sides. So that trapezoid's really close, but it's not quite there to being a parallelogram. Hopefully that helps sort of summarize all of the figures that we've looked at. This entire section has been about quadrilaterals. And I would also encourage you, there are each of these shapes has its own properties, and it'll be very easy to get these properties mixed up, right? To mix up the properties of kites and rhombuses, or to mix up the properties of rectangles and trapezoids, right? Um, so what I would do is, uh, however you best sort of memorize these properties, because you absolutely just have to memorize them, whether you use flashcards or, or set up something um, on Quizlet where you're taking small quizzes, or I believe you can even make flashcards on Quizlet, whatever it is that works best for you to go through and memorize the properties of each of these figures. You're gonna wanna do that, right? Because if you're taking this class with me, I absolutely am going to test you, not only on the properties, do you know the properties of these figures, but then do you know the properties well enough to be able to use them to solve problems just like we've been doing here in all of these videos following along with the notes. Guys, I had a great time taking a look at four-sided figures with you, particularly parallelograms, and I'll see you next time.